Okay, so I'd like to look at a really quick um, Ampere's Law problem. Um, these are always very nice, just like Gauss's Law problems. You just put a few things together and everything comes out rosy. It's really wonderful. So, in this case, what I'm going to want to look at is a, something that's m basically a model of a coaxial cable. All right. So, coaxial cable has um, two different two different wires. Basically you have a um, internal wire here. This is this carries your current and then you have a return path on the outside. All right. So that way all of your um, current comes back. So we end up with something that looks like this. Uh, we have our um, some current density in this wire here, J, all right? and then some return current here on the surface of this wire K. All right, so that that's what we're going to want to look at here for the um, for the problem. Um, and what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to find what the magnetic field from this guy is, uh, you know, in the different regions where we can have a magnetic field. Okay, um, so I'll put put these together let's see what sort of information we have um so we've got a coaxial cable we'll have to know the inner radius and the outer radius here and we'll have to be given something about j and k actually we're just going to be given j and a relationship for k all right so we're given a um, coaxial cable Um, and it carries a current uh, I as an inner radius A and an outer radius B um, and we know that the inner conductor so that inner conductor um, has a uniform uh, volume charge density. And the outer yeah, outer the outer one has a uniform um, s surface charge density. And we want to find, I said, we want to find the magnetic field from that. And if we just say the magnetic field, that means the magnetic field everywhere. So just anywhere it could possibly be. We'll have to figure out um, different expressions in different regions and other things like that. Um, and other things that just tell you that you're thinking about the problem, right? Um, so our concept, we already said, that's Ampere's Law. This is a perfect, um, it's a perfect problem for Ampere's Law because it has all this nice, um, nice symmetry. Um, and our equation for Ampere's Law is the very boring uh, mu, mu naught times the um, flux, the current flux through some something is equal to that line integral of the um, or that path integral of the uh, magnetic field. So we're, we're going to look. We're going to work with that. All right. Um, let's see. For our setup, what are we going to do? Uh, well, I think the easiest thing is to start with um, placing the axis. That that axis that. You know, that's the whole reason why we use the word coaxial, because both of these guys have the same axis. Place axis on z-axis. That looks good. Um, 
and probably what we'll do is we'll do all our amp we'll put our amperian loop in the um, xy plane when we get there and also we're going to have to um, separate into regions so we need different we have different regions that are going to have different fields uh, let's look at this in cross section right and and that'll basically tell us what's going on we've got our inner conductor here that will be one region then the region in between the inner conductor and the outer conductor that's another region two and then there's finally some third region out here uh, three okay so we're going to want to solve for the um, field in each one of these three regions um, so region one has um, the perpendicular the um, perpendicular distance here s so let's call this s uh, that will be that will be from here to somewhere inside region one. So S is less than A. Uh, region two will have um, S is between A and B. And region three, obviously everything that's left, which is S is greater than B. Okay, so. A uh, fairly simple way to go about this. Um, we'll just go through and do each one of these things um, in sequence, right? Um, so, what is our strategy? Um, one. Um, so we'll find current densities. Okay, so we know the total current, and we want to find the um, current densities um, J and K so that we can do our intervals. Um, and after that, we'll go to we'll actually start with Ampere's law. Um, we'll do the field integral first because um, that's not going to be that's not going to do anything um, that that field integral is going to be the same have the same result in each case so that's going to be going around in a circle like this taking advantage of the symmetry here right so we're just going to go around in this circle um yeah probably we'll go this way around the circle that way uh, counterclockwise um three uh we'll find um the flux in region one Okay, um, and these, this has to be done over and over. Do that for region two, and we'll do it for region three. And then six, oh, we'll just find the field. We'll find the field in each region, but we'll do that. We'll do that with a um, piecewise function, so we won't have to worry too much about that. That'll all come come out together. So the current densities. Let's see how do, how is that going to work? Um, I is equal to J times the area. This area here, right? Uh, that area there is equal to um, pi a squared right so that means j is equal to i over pi a squared and then k well i is equal to um k times that circumference around here this is a larger thing that's b so that's equal to 2 pi b times k so k is equal to i over 2 pi b Simple enough, easy to do. Now we've got those expressions whenever we need them, which we'll do, which we'll worry about later on. Um, now we do that field integral. We'll find that sigma b that I'm so interested in finding. 
Uh, that sigma b is going to be just um, this integral around um, the circumference of this guy of b dot dl. And so that's the integral from 0 to 2 pi um, of b dot uh, theta hat um, times s, which is this distance, times d theta, or I guess, yeah, it's theta, so it's b, it'll be d theta. All right, and so that, that integral is just 2 pi s b theta. So uh, that's going to be the same in each region. That's not something we're going to have to worry about, worry about um, terribly. Uh, how about region one? Region one, we want to find the flux there, phi of one. In that case, we want to um, get this entire region here, right? Um, S, S is somewhere inside here, so actually we want less than that region, right? So we want to take, so if this is that region here, S is out here somewhere, so we want to only have that much of, only that much is included in this integral, right? Because it's, it's the amount of the flux that goes through, through this um, region bounded by the um, circle, right? So in that case, we have the integral from zero to S, the integral from zero to two pi, of um, j uh, times what um, s d theta ds. Okay, so that's um, pi s squared times j. I'm going to call it simple enough. We're getting somewhere. Uh, phi 2. Uh, now, if we're out here somewhere, right? Before we get here, but out here, we ha we're actually getting the entire wire plus empty, empty space that doesn't have any current running through it at all. So we just integrate to the edge of the wire. So integrate from 0 to um, A, and we'll 0 to 2 pi, J, s d theta ds, but we already know what that is. That's pi a squared times j. So we're doing pretty good. We're cruising along. Uh, now we'll do phi 3, right, which is going to equal, um, which is going to equal phi 2 um, plus uh, the integral from 0 to to pi of k, or actually this is going the opposite direction, so it's yeah, it's plus minus k, right? Times um, we'll call that b, uh, right? Call that b there and uh, d theta, okay? So this is going to be um, pi a squared j minus um, 2 pi b k, which is equal to i minus i, which is equal to zero. So since all of that current's coming back, there's no net current going through this. <coughs> Excuse me. So all the current going through this little spot here has to come through the, come back the other way through here. So there's no net current going through going through this wider air, wider circle, so there's no flux, no net flux. And that's going to give us at least one easy thing. Now, because of the symmetry, all of the field is in this direction. That's the whole reason why we're using um, Gauss's law, or Ampere's law, excuse me. Um, so now we can just solve for B. We know it's going to be in the theta hat direction, right? It's going to be um, 1 over 2 pi s times um, mu naught times phi, right, in whatever, 
you know, at whatever position it is, right? Um, and so, in that case, we have three different um, spots, three different ways we can do this. We have um, this guy here, phi i, which is just e this guy is equal to um, i times s squared over a squared. This one's just equal to i, right? So, um, so here we have um, mu naught i over um, two pi, right? Uh, we've got s squared over a, so that's s over a squared. And that's in the theta hat direction, and so that's in region one. Region two, we still have the mu naught i and the two pi, but this s no longer cancels with anything, so we have one over s theta hat. It's region two. Uh, and I've run out of space. Region two. And then way down here, we have zero in whatever direction we want zero to be. That's region three. Okay. And that's basically all, all there is to it, to one of these um, Ampere's Law problems, is just do these nice, simple integrals and get an answer. All right. Um, there are three situations. There are three ty types of symmetry where this actually works out. Um, the cylindrical, the planar, and the toroidal. They're absolutely wonderful, and I know you'll love all of those wonderful problems I have on the problem set um, that, that use these, okay? So please try those problems, have a fun time, and um, I will see you in class.